Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone on YouTube, Patreon. We got a VR6 engine bay to clean up on Mark IV. So, we're going to show you how to do it. So, as always, we're going to break, fix, and repeat here at BGL's Garage. Well, it's not much, honestly. Get some type of brush, something to scrub with. We got a power washer as well. We're gonna be using a purple power um, degreaser. Where is it? This stuff right here. This stuff is amazing. It actually does work. Um, we use this to soak up the heavy areas. Now, one thing that we uh, tell you is remove all that matters if you can if you can't bag it so all the wiring you see over here we're gonna snip a bunch of stuff because this stuff is like aftermarket stuff so we're not gonna care for it all the factory stuff we're gonna take apart we're gonna take all off and we're gonna bag it and we're gonna zip tie it or tape it to make it sealed and as waterproof as possible double bag it if you need to unbolt everything that doesn't that matters with liquid that will get damaged with liquid water anything so on this side, primarily your biggest concerns is the main harness, the relay box, um, down here is the fan module, or aka the fan, fan relays. Um, all that stuff has to be bagged, so we're going to unbolt all of this. We're not going to clean it, we're just going to unbolt it, take off everything that doesn't matter, and put it aside. Over here on the left side, the passenger side, we're going to pull the power steering, or just bag it as well. I'll probably just unhook the, the main line and move the box. Uh, we're going to be removing the uh, wiper reservoir. We're going to be removing the AC system because we're not using that anymore. Uh, the main harness line right here is going to be moved and bagged. All of this is just going to be moved out of the way. So now we'll have a very, very clean and open engine bay. The exhaust, I mean, it can stay there for now. Um, this stuff doesn't matter. I mean, it'd be nice to get a good cleaning on this. Uh, the subframe, we're gonna actually going to pull the subframe out after we do the cleaning because we're going to do an actual power wash on the subframe because uh, that stuff is really grody. Uh, remember, if you remove the subframe, you are going to have to replace the bolts that go to that subframe. Um, they're one-time use bolts. If you're going to go that route, you might as well do some upgrades. Upgrade the bushings in the frame. Anything you can do to get some extra stiffness, I would recommend doing it. Um, let me see here. But yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show you all this because it's gross. And we're going to improve this engine bay pretty much night and day, make it look brand new. And then we're going to go for what you guys want to do. All right. Do you guys want to shave it? Do, should we just do a simple cleanup, a wire tuck? It's the sky's the limit with you guys. So please, let's make a choice. Let's make a poll about it and see what you guys want to do. So let's get so the to the other tools you're going to need is a 10 millimeter, 12 or 13 millimeter for these guys. Uh, start removing anything that, again, that doesn't matter. Um, this relay box, um, we're never going to see it again. We're actually going to remove this guy because we never keep these in here. Uh, oh, wow, there's only one relay, so that's good. Um, what is that? I mean, because this is garbage, we're no longer going to use this, but we'll put it over there. It's a good ashtray. Um, this one can actually stay here because I'll cover that. These are going to have to get covered, bagged, pull this trim out, put that over there, this, So this is going to have to get cut, so because that's in the way. Honestly, it is in the way. Just 
aftermarket stuff that was put into it. You know, when people do aftermarket stuff, they just don't take their time to learn how to hide wires or run wires in a nicer way. Grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> Let's see here. So, so right here. All these wires are held by a little plastic tab so it's really a matter if you're gonna do a, a clean wire like management I'm gonna go for that option so for right now figure that out just a bit that's in the way All right, you can do some custom horns because they're super easy to install. Just two wires. So we got these two right here to have to come out. Now, if you're gonna keep this stuff, just make sure you don't break it. Just take your time yanking stuff out. All right, this one I'm gonna probably keep together. I'll just unbolt it. That's the other power steering line. Let's see here. So yeah, unbolt these, this. So all this is one big loom. Be right back with some bags and some. We're gonna be removing this guy. This is the fan module. Um, I also call it the fan relay box because this is really what tells the um, the fans to kick on. Um, whenever I remove these, keep the uh, bolts intact with it because the bolts are particular in size and length. So. Just keep them together. If you want to replace them, just go to Home Depot, Lowe's, and match them up with the right size and length. Um, get some stainless steel ones, maybe. Make it look pretty. Uh, these are 10 millimeters, actually. Now, when we're going to go back and do this, all the ground points from the factory are nice. You can stick with them, or you can go and make your own custom ground points. Uh, that's definitely something that is doable. The only way you do ground points on these cars is it has to be to the body and it has to be bare metal. Come on. Jeez, there's so much junk on this. There we go. Um, so whenever you do grounding or making custom ground spots, Make sure they're good, strong metal points with a lot of bare metal. That's how these work. Um, the bolts are actually bare metal, so that's how they get grounded. So we have this part of the harness now removed. Now, this is where you go one step further and getting closer to tucking is removing this sucker. Because this is where it becomes no way back from here once you remove that. <laughs> Let's see. That's a 13. And this is the main ground point for the battery.
go. So there we go. Try to separate them as best you can. I know they're hard to, but we're going we're going deep into this, guys. So the rain trade or the waterfall, we also call it. Try to keep it as intact as possible from like here back. Do the best you can. Not a big deal if you can't. Um, we're gonna use it for some some mods down the road if we can. Again, if if you can, it's not a big deal if you can't. Oh, my baby girl's crying. Seems to do that a lot lately because she's teething. There we go. Whew! 100% intact. Not bad. It's actually my first time keeping it intact. I usually break through that. So. Now you see this whole loom is right here. So the goal is to keep that all together inside a bag or multiple bags so we don't get water in them. So the left side is pretty much, or the driver's side is pretty much done. Um, what you want to do is brush as much of this off as you can that's pretty gross because a lot of this stuff is just gonna come right off I mean you can just power wash it off but you're gonna make more of a mess than just to brush most of all the really chunky stuff So, driver's side, done for right now. Um, again, this is what you want to see is this whole loom on its own, out of the way. And then we're going to get a bag just to prevent moisture. And then we're going to get on this side and repeat the process. So on the passenger side, it's a little bit, uh, I can't say easier I guess is the term um, because there's you're not keeping most of this stuff since we're gonna be building this side we're gonna clean up so this is your uh, smog uh, canister here so there's two 10 millimeters right there we're no longer gonna keep this now keep in mind guys this is all smog stuff so if you're gonna remove it and you're in a state that requires smog um, yeah you're not going to pass smog. So, have fun with that. Me? We like to break the rules here at Pinchel's Garage. So, just a little bit. Okay, we'll get that on a little bit, but this right here, no longer needed. Now we're going to get a check engine light for removing this. So as I'm remembering off the top of your head, smog system has to be deleted in your in your tune. This is a fuel line, so remember that. That's important. So that stays over there. Power steering, we can put that over here. Uh, we're not keeping the, uh, the wiper reservoir, so that's coming off. That's also using the 10.
take off the sensors. Now, if you have uh, water in this, when you pull out one of the sensors, it will, I think, leak. I'm not remember. I don't remember. Um, yeah, this guy. It will leak if there's a lot of water in it. Alright, so remember we're not keeping the AC, so we're going to be unbolting that in just a moment. Just going to move this out of the way. So the AC system right here is these two metal lines. And they run it all the way over here into this little junction box, which has a little valve. It has a bolt here, and then you can unbolt this valve so that all the just that goes over there. Unplug that. So we just gotta remember we gotta take those off as the next part of uh, your removal. So these lines come out. Uh, they're held right here by a Phillips. And that should be it. Yeah, because again, we're not keeping the AC in this car, so that's gonna look good. So we're gonna grab a Phillips and bolt it here. So these two lines should come apart, yep, beautifully like that. Again, this is all trash, we're going to clean this whole area up when we're done. This uses a number, what is this, uh, five, yep, five Allen to unbolt this guy. rid of this line and that line to the pile. Uh, I'm not keeping any of this stuff so trash and then there's two bolts here that hold that one and they're gonna be smaller more than likely a four. Yep. Big bolts, man. Okay, so AC is removed and out of the way. Next, now is the wiring. So for this one, we had to be very careful because um, we want to move the wires, but without damaging them, and that's. These uh, wires are a little bit more on the rough side due to their location. So you have to pull the fuel system out, uh, fuel lines out first. So what I like to do is these kind of click. And they, okay, there you go. Pull. So click, click, pull over and out. And then you pull these guys. Remember the white ones are for smog and the black and blue ones are for fuel. Very important. Okay. So now that we're here, we're going to try to do the best we can not to damage this because uh, I want to take this out. And this one's a pain in the rear because of its location. There we go. So twist up, pull out, and then these lines come right out. Save this. This is super important. Um, we're going to keep that. 
Now, since we're going to wire tuck the driver, uh, passenger side quickly, this can come out. So just take your time taking this apart. Should be just a couple little pulls and what ifs and jerks and there we go. Put it in the pile. Now those, this is an ABS sensor, this is an O2 sensor. Pull these guys up and over. What you can do is leave the fuel lines here. Um, that way they don't go anywhere. And then, all this stuff is coming out. Because we're no longer going to have any other stuff here. Get your trusty brush and brush a brush a. What my nephew says all the time brush a brush a. Now we brush so we can get all the big debris out of the way. That's all we're doing is getting all the big stuff so when you power wash you don't get the stuff in your face when it blows back very minimal face stuff is the goal and now engine bay is ready for a power wash not bad guys not bad at all and we did that in what probably like 20 minutes 30 minutes now you'll see here the ABS module Make sure that stays nice and snug down there. Try not to damage that. Um, keep this plugged in because there's an open sensor. You don't want any water getting in that. Uh, everything else over here, we're going to bag it. Same over here. We're going to put a small bag, wrap it with some tape, and then start cleaning because uh, there's a, a lot of grime in here. So prior to cleaning, we're going to soak all of this with purple power and then start bagging, soak again, bagging, soak again, bagging. And again, just keep doing that for about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, so all this really thick grime loosens up. So when we power wash it, it just falls right off and it'll look beautiful when we're done. So now we are in soaking phase, meaning we're going to soak the engine bay with purple power. Now, don't worry about the fuel lines getting a little bit of water in them because we're going to be draining all of that later. Because again, this car has been sitting for a long time. So we don't know what's in the fuel lines, what chemicals he put in or additives he did in the fuel. So we got to place very, we got to be very smart about what we do as we're building this car. So again, just soak it. A little couple squirts goes a long way and a lot more squirts goes even further. Squirty squirt 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 squirt. Now again you don't have to do it down here if you don't want to. Um, we're going to do it a couple times because the axle grease and all that is really caked on. You're going to have to do some actual scraping for that stuff to come off. So, uh, unfortunately, that's going to be a little bit of elbow grease required for that stuff to get cleaned off. But, good thing we got that elbow grease. So, we're going to do it. We got elbow grease, passion, desire. Fun. I mean, I'm enjoying this, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> I enjoy cleaning engine bays. It's a lot of fun, actually. 
I enjoy anything with cars, honestly. <laughs> Now the th issue with purple power, I'm going to give you guys a heads up right now about purple power. If you let it sit and then you want rinse it off and you don't rinse it off well, it leaves a white residue and it makes your engine bay look really bad. So you're going to be spending more time cleaning on that than actually cleaning. So just a heads up on that guys. You can see already this stuff is doing its job just by sitting on here. Now the longer you let it sit and the more you keep it wet, the stronger this stuff gets. Um, if you don't get it wet wet, it won't do its job very well. I've noticed that. <clears throat> so I like to soak it as much as I can. Yeah, this stuff is impressive in how well it works. And it's so cheap. I, hold, I bought a gallon for four bucks. You know, there's other cheap stuff out there at the like 99 cent store um, that works really well, but this has worked the best for me in my years of cleaning engine bays. And you can literally watch the grease just come right off. It's insane in how good this stuff works. It sucks breathing it in though. Stuff burns a little bit when you breathe it in. <laughs> Now we're going to watch this sucker <sighs> turn into something new just by power wash. I still got to get my bags though. So I'll be right back. So my wife had some uh, trash, trash bags already ready for me. So. Now we do that, so as you can see, we can do all, we can move the bag around and clean one section at a time. That way, 
we don't damage any electronics. I know this is kind of going overboard, but it works. Hey, Zonzo. All right. So one more quick little squirty, squirt, 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 as we work on power washing the crud out of this. Fill this bottle back up. Oh, and uh, just a reminder, if you have any cuts in your hand, this will notify you in a heartbeat. <laughs> this stuff burns when you have cuts. Just want to give you guys a heads up on that. It will tell you you have a cut. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> All right, one more little squirty squirt, and we're ready to go. All right, so we're gonna backtrack really quick before we start washing. Remove all the wiring, put it in bags, Watch everything in bags, soak, soak in power, uh, purple power, or any really strong degreaser if you can get a hold of any. Remove any and all plastic hardware that you don't care for or you're never going to use again. Um, soak again. If you have a brush, prior to doing all of this, brush all the big debris out of the way. That way you only are soaking uh, purple power on the stuff that's going to be washed off. And that's pretty much it. So let's get to power washing. Um, it's going to be noisy, so I recommend turn the volume down. So let's get to work. So. All right. So a nice, strong, strong beam here. And we're going to work from right to left or left to right. But I'm going to start from right to left. So.
Now, I'm going to show you this. All the stuff that doesn't come off, you're going to need to let it dry for a little bit and then come back with the purple power and let it soak a little bit longer and that should just fall right off. Um, but you can see already stuff just coming right off <laughs> besides that. Um, not bad, not bad at all. Wow, that is just one so uh, two soakings of purple power, three maybe tops, but that is wow. Look over there, look over there, night and day. We're not done yet. This isn't fully cleaned yet, but it's it's pretty now. Ew, ew. <laughs> So if you're feeling up to it, the next step is to grab a brush, soak it in purple power, and start scrubbing. Um, if it's wet, purple power won't stick to the actual like uh, area, especially if it has grease on it. I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but it just falls off. It runs instead of staying and doing its job. So if you get a brush... That isn't soaked in oil. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
we're gonna power wash it anyway so just go through it and give it another quick scrubbing with some loving and see if that does the trick on getting the, the, the nasty thicker stuff out of there for you Again, let it soak because that's how purple power works is by soaking. And then come back to it one more time and see if you have any improvement on cleaning. Let it soak and do its job. Let's get to the uh, passenger side now. So now we're going to get on the passenger side and see how this turns out. Yeah, we didn't even know there were numbers there. Alright, look at that. Whew. That's pretty clean. Let's keep going.
right, let's get this side. Oh man, well there you have it. That's a that's a clean engine bay. <laughs> now we're gonna go through it one more time, but we're gonna start actually scraping stuff off of here. Um, I don't think you guys need to see that, but I just want to show you guys that. It doesn't take much to get the engine bay this clean. As you can see, I put almost little effort into cleaning it and pulling all the wiring out and getting it done right. So the next step is to you grab your air compressor and blow all the water out so you don't want any standing water. Standing water causes rust, rust causes oxidation, and blah, 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 all these other fun problems. Um, you guys get the picture. Um, so we're gonna let this again let this dry out we're gonna get air compressor and again blow it out and then we're gonna go from there see what you guys want to do next on the build uh, since we're gonna be waiting on an engine um, we might as well do what we can for free which is cleaning the engine bay uh, not really free but the cheapest thing to do is to do the engine bay um, personally uh, I'm gonna have you guys make the decisions here on what we should do to this engine bay. I'm thinking grind off everything, sand as much as we can off, polish, not polish, I mean uh, sand, do some body filler, clean it up, and then just smoothen it out. Um, nothing super crazy, just a nice, clean, and simple bay. Uh, the biggest and hardest part of doing a clean bay is getting rid of this right here the seam sealer is what you see here all this weird textured stuff that's called seam sealer um that stuff is hard to get out because it's like a rubber and it's in a really uh tough crevice and whatnot so um yeah we're gonna have to do all that if you guys want to go that route again your guys's choice i just do all the work so uh thank you for tuning in and we'll show you guys what to do or well, not what to do next, but what's coming up next on the next DIY here at Pinchy Al's Garage. Thank you again, everybody, uh, for your support on Patreon. Uh, because if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. Straight and simple. Thanks a lot, and have a wonderful day. Peace out. And as always, we're going to break, fix, and repeat.